Welcome to the show. He is one of the most important voices of our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, commentator and host of TV One's News One Now. Roland Martin is in the building. What's, What's going up, on? How All you good, feel, man. All good. Man, I've been trying to get this dude on the show forever. I mean, this man right here got to be busier than the president, man. <laughs> well, actually, uh, the current president uh, doesn't do much work. Uh, well, I wasn't so, talking I mean, about just, that. Okay, I, mean, just, just, I wasn't even talking about him. I'm still I mean, talking just, about Barack. <laughs> just, just two weeks in, he already playing golf, and all he did was complain and bitch about President Obama playing golf. Exactly. I'm like, uh, two weeks in, you already playing golf right. down in Florida. But uh, I, I, first of all, I don't even I, – I just call that dude in the White House. Right. Exactly, because he's not my president, man. Well, he's a first. He's a joke. He's a joke. I mean, so he 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 talked. I love how he always criticized Hillary Clinton during the campaign, talking about well how much how he just has so much energy, right. but yet when he when he acted a fool with the Australian Prime Minister and hung the phone up, they tried to come out and say, well, you know, he was tired. Tired. Right. right. You ain't do nothing. You t- you tired. Man, how does that happen, man? How did we allow this to happen, man? Like this. He, I mean. The Republican Party, they had to have somebody that was more intelligent, somebody that could speak no, 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 they did. above you know, yeah, a, a fourth you, grade level. But you got to remember, you had, you, there were about nine or ten governors who ran. Right. The prob- Here's the deal. This is the deal. So when you have 16 people, you don't need 50%. All you need is 30%. Because when you're running against that many people, you pick up 30%, you can win a primary. And so this dude played by no rules. He attacked, he trashed them, uh, and he, he appealed to that base level of people who angry, fed up, upset. He was so vulgar, fine with it. And even if, think about it. One of his first attacks was on Senator John McCain, who's a POW, and they didn't care. And so, and so when, you trash, when you trash folks to that level, all of a sudden you're taking folks out. And remember, his opponents were scared to attack him. Mm-hmm. And people did underestimate him. Many of us said he didn't have a shot because we actually thought Republicans had more brains than that than voting for this dude. And we thought the American people had more brains right. than that. And so then so you had, you had this perfect storm. Him, you had the people who didn't like Hillary Clinton, who were mad at her, liberals who wanted a perfect candidate, had to, had to agree on every single issue out there. And all of a sudden, he runs against her. Her team runs a horrible campaign, horrible, uh, not enlisting proper people. Then all of a sudden, he gets in. But see, he, he, here's the beauty, though, uh, and I'll compare it to you like this here. Uh, you have any sisters? Yeah. Okay. Two. So imagine... Your sister's dating somebody. You, your mama, your daddy, everybody in the family saying, he ain't no good for you. Right. He ain't no good. No, I love him. I love him. I love him. No, don't listen to nobody. Right. Okay, then it's kind of like, okay, you want to marry that fool. Right. You go ahead and marry him. Then all of a sudden, your life is hell. Well, you can't run back and look at everybody else. And we're like, we tried to tell you he was stupid. Right. But you kept wanting to stick with them. It's the same thing. Sometimes, sometimes you get what you ask for. And so now all the folks on the left who are angry and ticked off, all those fools who say, oh, uh, Hillary, she, uh, 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 she's no better than Trump. Now they're going, damn, she, she actually would have been better than him. It's like, oh, now y'all want to see. So sometimes you need that wake up call. Mm-hmm. Trump is that wake up call for all those folks sat on their behinds. A lot of black millennials sat on their behinds. You know, uh, the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies did a survey in where black voters were at, black voters made it clear to the tune of 92, 94% they were going to vote. 76% of uh, black folks, 18, 29, said they were going to vote. 18% of Folks, 18, 29 who are black said they were not going to vote at all. Mm-hmm. Now you're mad. That 18% but you could have been vote. the difference in the, in, in the presidency. Well, yeah, because yeah. the deal is just here. And this is the piece. Whenever you hear people say there's not enough black people to flip an election, that's a lie. We don't vote our numbers. We don't vote our numbers. 
Same thing with Latinos. You have 2.1 million eligible but unregistered Latinos in Texas. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you got 30% of the unregistered but eligible Latinos in Texas, if you got 30% of them to register and vote, just 30%, forget the other two-thirds, that's about 700,000. If you look at the elections in Texas, the difference is anywhere from 250 to 300,000 votes. So if you do a 70-30 right. split of 700,000, you're talking about 490,000 votes. You could actually win. You, right. can, beat, you can beat Republicans uh, in that effort. And so it, when you vote your numbers, and that's the problem. See, what we have to say is, we don't care what white folks do. We're going to vote our numbers. Right. We're not going to leave our power sitting at home. You vote your numbers, you can anticipate that they're not going to vote their numbers. Mm -hmm. You can actually win elections. And so now it's a wake-up call. The Women's March, then you had the refugee, uh, the Muslim ban march. I mean, everywhere he goes, he was in Mar a Lago, uh, his, uh, his second, third weekend, boom, protests followed. Now folks are realizing, yeah, you're going to have to have resistance every day for the next four years. I'm resisting my ass off. I already told everybody, man, I, Donald Trump is never getting my support. I'm going to treat him just like he treated Barack Obama. I'm going to give him the most disrespect I can muster in my, out of my, from my soul. I am going to disrespect him at every turn. He ain't getting nothing because all of a sudden he gets in office and everybody's saying, forget about it. Y'all cry babies. Saying, saying uh, give him a chance. Leave it alone. Give, him a, give him a chance. Let's unite. But what was all this uniting and, and getting together and forgetting about it when Barack was in office and they attacked Barack for eight, eight straight years, even before he got in office, when they saw it was possible that he could get there, they started going in. Well, on. The, it, my, my issue when it comes to, it's so like, for instance, when, Jim Brown, Ray Lewis, um, Steve Harvey, Martin Luther King III, and all of these different folks met with Trump. Mm -hmm. And then you had this blowback. I made clear the blowback wasn't because, the blowback was not because uh, uh, they met with them. It's what, it's what you said and articulated when you came out of the meeting. Right. And I, I said this on my show, if I met with Trump, right. And when the meeting was over, the media would say, what happened? I said, well, first and foremost, I looked, I looked him in his eye and I said, when are you going to apologize to American people uh, for being the birther in chief, for lying on President Barack Obama and his birth certificate? Did you personally apologize to President Obama? That was the first question I asked him. The second question I asked him uh, is, when you talk about black folks, what the hell do you have to lose? Uh, I want to know right now, uh, do, are you going to stand with black folks when it comes to the full implementation of the Voting Rights Act, which the Supreme Court gutted uh, in Shelby v. Holder in 2013? Are you going to call out North Carolina Republicans for the massive voter suppression? You've been lying about all this voter fraud, three to five million votes. Where's your proof? See, I'm going to come out and I'm going to lay out all the stuff that I said, and black folks are going to be like, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. See, I'm not going to come out and say, oh, it was great, he was congenial, it was nice. Yeah, and right. No. That's what tripped me out about him, about, about a lot of them that came out. It seemed like they were just happy to be invited to the, to the White House, um, not the White House, but to his house. To a meeting. You, to, you to have to have an agenda. To, yeah. For me, as you walk in, what's your agenda? I would, I, I'm walking to the meeting saying, during the campaign, Hillary Clinton pledged $25 billion to HBCUs. What's your HBCU plan? Right. I want to know what's your plan when it comes to African-American businesses being able to get small business loans. I want to know what's your plan when it comes to, uh, you keep saying uh, black unemployment. Okay, what is your existing plan? Okay, you talk about opportunities. What opportunities give me hardcore numbers that you provided for black firms when it came to your buildings and construction? How many folks, did, who did you help out? Did you, was it 20, right. 30, 40%? And what were those companies? You talk about creating jobs. Did you create any jobs programs for African Americans when it came to your construction companies? Please show me the proof. Right. See, that, see I, I'm not going to accept just your general sort of BS. No, 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 no. I'm going to challenge you with very specific information, and you're going to have to give me your plan, your policy, not some generic, oh, I want to do something about the problem. Right. No, it's not going to work.
You're checking out Willie D Live.